I'm Jason Epperson, and it's time for this week's RV and Camping News. Our top story this week comes from Death Valley National Park, where flooding trapped nearly 1,000 people in the park. On Friday, unprecedented amounts of rainfall caused water to rip through parking lots. It toppled trees and covered roads with boulders. All roads into and out of the park are currently closed and will remain closed until park staff can assess the extensiveness of the situation. According to a press release, approximately 500 visitors and 500 staff were unable to exit the park, but the California Department of Transportation has been able to or is working on opening up some access to get people out. No injuries to staff or visitors have been reported. Approximately 60 cars though, belonging to visitors and staff are buried in several feet of debris at the inn at Death Valley. Many facilities are flooded, including hotel rooms and offices. The park received 1.46 inches of rain at Furnace Creek, which nearly matches the previous daily record of 1.47 inches set back in 1988. This comes after another flash flood less than a week ago that washed a car completely off the highway and buried it halfway up in rocks and mud. One park visitor told USA Today that it took him about six hours to drive 35 miles out of the park on the washed out roads. Meanwhile, Yellowstone continues to make progress with efforts to reconnect the park to Gardner and Cook City, Montana, after the mid-June 500 year flood event that caused severe damage to roads and other critical park infrastructure. The most significant damage severed access to the park via the north entrance and the northeast entrance roads. One month after the historic event and the park closing temporarily, 93% of roadways are reopened, but those two entrances are critical in the winter. The north is normally the only way in and out of the park after the snow gets deep and the pressure is on to provide a temporary solution. The park says that both roads should be accessible to regular traffic beginning October 15th, which is incredible considering the amount of damage, but a solution to permanently rebuild both roads is going to be a multi-year endeavor. Many of you have asked me recently about why I'm so bullish on the RV industry when all they see are signs of doom. The biggest reason is that I'm not trying to predict the future. Instead, I'm trying to let you know what's happening in the here and now. I don't know what tomorrow will hold, but I think it's important to meet the subjective opinion with facts that might reveal a different story. Case in point, it's time for some big quarterly earnings reports. First up, Camping World, the nation's largest RV dealership chain with 190 stores. Camping World rung in their best ever revenue in the period between April and June. That said, their profit off that revenue dropped almost 6% primarily due to the higher cost of new RVs. And if you'll indulge me a second, there are a couple of interesting numbers in this report I wanna highlight for you. In quarter two, Camping World has sold just over 23,000 RVs, a decrease of about 11% over 2021. But used RV sales are up 8.6%, which is significant because it means more used inventory is available out there. Overall, Camping World has sold about 3.8% fewer RVs over the same period last year, but it's still more RVs than were sold in quarter two of pre-pandemic 2019. Camping World's inventory has increased dramatically this quarter. There was more than double the inventory on their lots this spring over last. But if you think rising levels of inventory might be reducing prices, think again. The average new RV sold for $46,000, an increase of 14% over last year, while used RVs sold for about 11% higher. And remember, 2021 was a bonkers year for the RV industry. The story was almost identical at Lazy Days dealerships, except their profit didn't drop. It increased 17% over Q2 of 21. Lippert, who makes components that can be found on the vast majority of RVs, had a 40% increase in net sales. All that to say, so far, the industry is doing just fine. There's definitely a big slowdown underway, but there have yet to be signs of a massive reckoning happening in the RV world. There's a lot more news ahead, but first, this episode is sponsored by our friends at RoadPass, makers of the Togo RV app. Download it for free on Apple or Android and use it for RV maintenance reminders and checklists and storing all the data about your RV. They have all kinds of RV ownership information, including a new course from Abby and myself on RV buying. If you like the app, you can get a RoadPass Pro membership, which unlocks all of the premium features of the Togo RV app. It's $49.99 a year and gives you turn-by-turn -turn RV GPS routing, lots of great discounts on things like tires and lithium batteries and more. A RoadPass membership also includes premium features at Campendium, Road Trippers, R Village, along with the OvernightRVParking.com database of truly 
verified boondocking spots. Download the free Togo RV app, and if you decide to upgrade to a Road Pass Pro membership, you can save $10 off with the promo code RVMILES10X. Another thing that's helping folks in the RV industry breathe a little easier is a reduction in fuel prices over the past several weeks. AAA reports that since last Monday, the national average of a gallon of regular gasoline has declined 15 cents to $4.08, which is 93 cents below the high set June 14th. Increasing domestic fuel stocks and decreasing demand are driving the drop. Crude oil prices are falling too. Diesel vehicle owners haven't fared quite as well. A gallon of diesel averages 516 across the US, down about 75 cents from its high. The all-electric F-150 Lightning has been in the hands of owners for a few weeks now, and we're getting some data about towing performance. Just over a year ago, I put out a video doing the exact opposite of what I said I don't like to do before, predicting the future. I said that the standard battery Lightning's range would probably drop below 100 miles when towing a trailer, even half its 10,000 pound tow rating. Well, Motor Trend has done some testing on a platinum trimmed Lightning with the extended battery that has an EPA rated 300 mile range. Motor Trend tested towing three different weights of RV trailers and confirmed that Lightning's range drops more than in half when towing even the lightest. Motor Trend tested for real world use instead of the best possible range, driving with the air conditioner set to 72 and with the headlights and stereo system running. The 300 mile EPA estimate is for a combo of city and highway driving, but Motor Trend did just highway miles to emulate a road trip. Regenerative braking wouldn't come into play much. With the smallest and lightest trailer, a 3,000 pound Forest River R-Pod, they measured a range of just 115 miles. They got 100 miles with a 5,200 pound Coachman Freedom Express and 90 miles with a 7,200 pound Grand Design Imagine. It's going to be a long time before electric trucks are really useful for distance towing. That's just not their use case yet. They'll be great for people wanting to tow their boat to the lake or their RV to the local state park and for local contractors wanting to haul a load of landscaping material to a job site. But perhaps if the range doubles in five years, as it tends to do with improvements in battery technology, we'll see an electric vehicle that can tow a 3,000 pound trailer 200 miles. With a break for lunch to charge, that's a 400 mile travel day, but electric trucks aren't going to be there just yet. One of the options that future EV truck owners might want to consider is the new REI edition Base Camp 16 from Airstream. This just announced special edition model is built with a wide range of sustainability features, such as fabrics and laminates made from post-consumer recycled materials, a cutting board sink cover made from recycled paper and cabinetry crafted from lightweight and sustainably grown wood. There's a recirculating water heater, an optional composting toilet, a UV water purification system and 360 watts of flexible rooftop solar panels with a 200 amp hour battery bank. It's also outfitted with a 25-piece REI co-op product kit that includes chairs, a picnic table cover, and kitchen gear. Customers can place orders from authorized Airstream dealerships with pricing starting at $52,009. Another option is the new 5.1 edition of the Taxa Mantis, one of my favorite little trailers, which can sleep up to four adults, but still clocks in at 3,100 pounds. Mantis owners love that it's short enough to fit into a seven foot garage and the 2023 edition brings a flexible workspace to the party and a bathroom that can be set up inside or outside depending on how you're camping. As small as it is, the shower can accommodate someone up to six foot six and the shower wand can reach all the way outside so you can spray your muddy feet off. Mantis has an MSRP of $56,000. Continuing the light and unique trend, Jayco has made some new RV announcements as well. According to an article in RV Business, the new single axle Volair travel trailer was unveiled at the dealer Homecoming with a bit of a European design. It's constructed out of composite and aluminum with a one piece roof. Opposing electric sofas convert into a queen bed and it's SUV towable with a gross vehicle weight rating under 5,000 pounds. It can come with perimeter cameras, two 200 amp lithium batteries, two 190 amp hour solar panels, and an 1800 watt inverter. MSRP is in the upper 40,000 range. Jayco also announced the all new adventure ready Seneca XT Super C on the Ford 600 4x4 chassis with a two inch lift. Details of neither model have been released on Jayco's website, but you can check out a walkthrough of the Volare trailer on our buddy Josh the RV Nerd's YouTube channel. We'll link to it in the description. That's it for this week's RV and camping news roundup. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.